Hi, my name is Teresa Lassell, and the digital collection I'll be presenting is the Library of Congress's digital collection of daguerreotypes. The mission of the Library of Congress is to engage, inspire, and inform Congress and the American people with a universal and enduring source of knowledge and creativity. Uh, and they do this by engaging uh, Americans' cultural and intellectual curiosity and creativity. The user community for this library is primarily members of the public. Uh, all persons 16 years old and older may use the physical collections stored at the Library of Congress, and all persons of any age may access the Library of Congress's digital collections via their website. The stakeholders are the Library of Congress, this library serves as the research arm of Congress and is recognized as the National Library of the United States and the library librarian of Congress who oversees the library and is appointed by the president and confirmed by vote in the Senate. So funding is secured for the Library of Congress in two ways. Uh, the first through the Legislative Branch Appropriations Act, which is what details how money appropriated for the Legislative Branch will be distributed. But also the Library of Congress receives funding from private donations. And in recent years, uh, private donations for the Library of Congress uh, have been increasing. In regards to cooperation with other libraries, while other libraries cannot directly contribute to the Library of Congress's digital collections, uh, the Library of Congress does have an interlibrary loan program. Uh, this program allows an individual in any state to go to their local academic, public, or special library and ask their local library to request a loan from the Library of Congress on their behalf. This program also extends to any international academic, public, or special library. In regards to the daguerreotype collection that we are going to be discussing today, this is the main page, what it looks like. And this library collection contains uh, approximately 700 copies of physical daguerreotypes, mostly uh, portraits, but they do have other types of images. And the Library of Congress digitized their collection by making negatives of the daguerreotypes, meaning they took photographs of the daguerreotype, which is an early photographic process, and then scanned those negatives uh, to digitize the image. Now, the Library of Congress includes as much metadata as possible. However, they do state on their website um, that the cataloging for most of the prints and photographs division uh, is minimal level. That's what they consider it. As for a lot of these images, especially the daguerreotypes, which a lot were created during the early 1800s, uh, don't have a lot of information attached to them. Um, and then as far as standards go, of course, the Library of Congress, having several standards that it has created, uses many of them for the metadata for these objects, including the thesaurus for graphic materials, subject headings, and authorities and vocabularies. The physical and digital objects are related to each other in the digital objects metadata. They do include the call number and physical location of the actual daguerreotype that was used to make the digital copy. And while the Library of Congress has no formal collection development policy for this specific collection, uh, they do have their digital strategy on their website, which outlines their goal of expanding their digital acquisitions program uh, to continue their digitization of their collections. And no one is currently adding to this particular collection. However, it would fall under the purview of the Librarian of Congress and the Office of the Librarian.
services. Now, as far as access, all the contents of this particular collection are in the public domain and are free to use and reuse. There is a main general search bar at the top of the page, which will allow you to search the entire collection. You can also browse via the collection tabs and use filters in a column to narrow your search, as well as search through articles and essays related to this collection. There are not reference services specific to this collection. However, you can submit a request to the, a librarian at the Library of Congress who will assist you with your research. The Library of Congress doesn't specify what hardware uh, they use to digitize their collections, nor where they store the servers or files. Presumably, however, that is stored physically at the Library of Congress and users do not have to have any extreme amounts of experience in using digital libraries to use and access this collection. I'm now going to provide a brief demonstration of how to navigate this digital collection, starting out on the main landing page for the Daguerreotype collection on the Library of Congress. You'll see right away that you have all the about information, uh, but also you have a search bar on the top right. And by default, it is set to search this collection specifically. Uh, so let's say I just want to check out the garotypes of women um, that were made. So I am just going to type women in the search bar and hit enter. And what I have now is a list of all the collection items that feature women. And then on the left hand side here, you'll see that I can narrow this down even further. So these images were all created during the 1800s. Not really much for me to narrow down in the year. However, if I wanted to specify daughters, I would click that, it adds my filter to the top, and I would get these results, which happen to be these three images. So now let's say I wanna take a closer look at one of these objects, I would just click on it. And you'll see that with these objects, as discussed, the Library of Congress's access policy is that these are free to use and reuse. So they actually give you the option of downloading various sizes of this image file for you to use uh, as you need. You can also scroll down and view all of the metadata information that gives you more information about this particular object. For example, it shows you that this isn't just part of the daguerreotype collection that we're looking at, but also these other collections maintained by the Library of Congress. It shows you what subject headings are used, where it was created, who the photographer was, and in particular, the call number and physical location of this daguerreotype. Um, this is nice if you do find yourself at the Library of Congress and you'd like to see the physical object, a librarian can use this information uh, to find it for you. That way you have access to it. And when you scroll further down, it does have information about rights and access, how to obtain copies, and how to access the originals. And then it also provides the citation for this object in three main citation styles uh, in case you need to reference it uh, for research that you are conducting. And then if you just hit the back button, you end up at your search results and you could always click about this collection to land back at the main page and start over. And finally, these are some related URLs. These are all listed under related um, information in the collection itself. And these are my references. Thank you for listening.